Today we're going to fix a Nakamichi 480. It's a dual capstan, two head, cassette deck made in 1981. The video is sped up to uh, twice normal speed because uh, the, the process does take a couple of hours and uh, it hasn't been serviced in probably 40 years. <clears throat> So, um, it needs the transport generally overhauled. So we're going to remove the transport, uh, replace all the belts, uh, clean up all the old lubrication, re-oil, re-grease, um, and test it. Let's see if it runs. I think it, uh, I know it did, because uh, I'm narrating the video after uh, having serviced the deck. The uh, first thing you want to do is get the transport out on the bench. Take the screws out, front panel, top cover, bottom cover, front panel, all gets removed. Um, be careful of the little stick going to the power switch. It's made of plastic and it's uh, 40 years old and can, uh, can be cracked easily, so be careful of that. And here I am undoing that. You twist it uh, 90 degrees to remove it from the uh, front panel power button. <clears throat> uh, removing the front cover from the cassette well and removing the front panel from the scutcheon. So the things you want to undo are the record place switch uh, operating cable. There's a cable. It's kind of like a, a brake cable on an old bicycle. It's uh, it's not an electrical cable. It's uh, it's a mechanical cable, and it uh, it's used to uh, to move the record play switch in to record or play as appropriate. And uh, <clears throat> removing the connectors. There are uh, one, two, three, four connectors to the transport on the old 480. Uh, two are for the head, two are for the mode motor and uh, all the motors. Capstan motor, real drive motor, mode motor. Uh, I'm testing the capstan belt just to see how slippery it is, and it's very slippery. The machine has apparently not been serviced since 1981. Removing the VU meter bridge so that I can get the frame that holds the transport controls removed because that has to come out of the way to um, to get the, the leads that go to the uh, record play and erase heads. So I'm removing those leads. And uh, at this point it's just four screws holding the transport in. You have to remove the headphone jack so you can get to the screw that's under it. It helps to have a JIS screwdriver because the Japanese screws are a little bit different from a number two Phillips. At first glance, they appear to be a number two Phillips, but they're shaped just a, a wee bit different. So, um, so, yeah, so it helps to have a JIS type of X screwdriver to. Uh, to match those screws. It works a little better. Okay, here I am removing the transport.
there it is. The transport is free now. Put the chassis uh, off to the side and uh, start on taking the transport apart and replacing the belts, cleaning up old lube. Over the years, the uh, oil and grease has hardened up and uh, needs to be cleaned up and replaced. Four screws hold the plate that uh, holds the capstan motor and keeps the capstan flywheels in place. Those screws are a different length, so observe that. Be observant of the screw length because they're not all the same. And uh, you get in trouble if you put a long screw where a short screw should be because the, uh, the plastic can crack. You want to uh, try not to apply a lot of torque when you're turning screws here. Here the capstan is being removed. Take note of the spring on the capstan. Make sure you don't lose the spring. And notice that the uh, capstans are different sizes. There are some springs, three springs, holding the transport together. I'm removing those now using a little hook that I got from the Harbor Freight store. And there are six screws here that are a shorter length from the previous four that are removed. So make sure you don't mix up the screws. Very small screw holds the record prevent switch. I'm removing that. I get in there with some tweezers. Get that tiny screw out. Uh, make sure all make sure the mode belt's unhooked. Okay, I think that's what I'm doing here is unhooking that belt, and the sandwich opens up. What I do in here is uh, remove the the drive gear for the cam and the cam. Uh, clean up the lubrication, relubricate it, reassemble it. Put a little bit of oil on the uh, the center of the cam and the cam drive gear, and some grease on the surface of the cam. Lithium grease is okay. I have some uh, synthetic grease that that I got from a vendor. <clears throat> um, I've used lith lithium grease as well. Uh, standard stuff you get at a hardware store. It's not too hard to find. And the oil is uh, a, a light oil, light synthetic oil. It holds in place and it doesn't dry up. I'm undoing the small circlips that hold the cam drive gear and the cam. They're very small and they tend to fly, so be careful of that. Don't lose them. Sometimes you have to play with them for a minute. <laughs> I 
should probably edit out this part of the video, but I'm not a very good video editor. <laughs> Need some practice with that. It's cold here in Tennessee. I got a sniffle. Okay, so the cam comes out. Uh, can of oil come, uh, reappears here, and we oil the the center pin holding those two gears. And put those guys back together. Um, before you remove the cam, it's a good idea to <clears throat> just look it over so you get an idea where the cam followers are supposed to go in that cam. <clears throat> the cam moves the uh, the the heads and pinch rollers into position and uh, and operates that cable that operates the record play switch so when you press play you'll you'll hear those cams rotate and think will move mm. <laughs> Siri, I'm trying to uh, get that cam back into position where it's supposed to be. Fiddled with it for a little while, but I got it. The next stage is to relubricate the uh, take up and supply spindles and replace the rubber tire on the idler idler pulley that uh, drives the the reel tables, reel tables, spindles, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so cam. Cam drive gear. It's all going back into place. And I put a new. I'll need to replace the belt that drives the, uh, the cam gear. They call it a mode belt. It's between the mode motor and the cam. To regulate the take-up torque, a lot of tape recorders do this. There's a felt felt pad on that uh, take-up spindle, and uh, it should it slips all the time, so that it maintains a uh, an even take-up torque. Um, when you take off the supply and take-up spindles. Uh, Keep track of which is which, because even though they look the same, they may be uh, set for different uh, torque specifications. There's a small, <clears throat> small back tension break under the supply spindle, and uh, you can hook it in place. I noticed. Um, I'll hold it up and show you here. Uh, at some point. But anyway, make sure that back, bra back tension brake goes gets put back in place so that it maintains the proper back tension, which is I think it's specified at 10 gram centimeters. Sometimes you need to adjust it up and down to uh, to get a proper tape path on these things. Um, the little circlip on the, <laughs> little circlip came, came loose and I lost it, but I found it later. So that's why I turned off the camera. Okay. End of part one.